Like it or not, everything is changing. The result will be the most wonderful experience in the history of man or the most horrible enslavement that you can imagine. Be active or abdicate. The future is in your hands. There's nobody coming to save you. There's no Christ figure coming to save you. The ETs aren't coming to save you. It's up to us. We have to pay attention to what's going on. We have to realize that all of the schism and all of the problems that have been created on this planet are our problems and only we can deal with them because it is only we who have allowed them to happen. We've allowed them to happen because we got distracted. There are so many means that are put in place to do this, folks. There are so many mechanisms that are used. And one of the main ones is food, folks. Have you seen how the food has changed? Have you noticed how the food has changed in the last few decades? Even the sweets and lollies that the kids eat, folks. Remember these things used to be full of sugar? You'd drop one on the ground and within a minute it would be covered in ants and insects eager to eat the sugar in the lolly. But now you drop a lolly or a sweet on the ground and the insects won't go near it because the ingredients have changed. But modern food folks, modern bread, modern anything from a packet that you drop on the ground, it's very rare that the ants will cover the food and rush to consume it the way they used to. In fact, None of nature seems very interested in eating anything that comes from a packet anymore. And yet people within society consume all of these prepackaged foods all the time, never noticing that nothing else will eat them, unless they're absolutely forced to. And people have become addicted to this prepackaged and artificially sweetened food. Very noticeable tests that they did, folks, they got prepackaged very, very low-grade, artificially enhanced food, and they fed it to rats. Essentially, they were feeding them the sort of food that your average household consumes. And then they stopped feeding them this food and put real food back in front of them, and the rats had become so addicted to the pre-packaged, artificially sweetened food that they actually preferred to starve themselves to death rather than eat real, nutritious food. And so this is the effect that this food is having upon our society, most especially upon the younger generation. You see, it's affecting them both biologically and psychologically. And this is a very, very dangerous state to be in, and it's imperative that we start turning things around. The media. The media is doing such an incredible job of eliminating all dissenting voices, failing to report the truth, failing to report anything objective or look at anything objectively, failing to do any true journalism at all and completely selling the lie to the people. We've had an announcement, I think, by Westpac Bank that they will soon be refusing to accept cash deposits. By the end of the month or perhaps by the end of next month, they're going to be refusing to accept cash deposits. They're just really pushing things, folks, as much as they can. And they're doing it from all directions. That's the problem, you know, they're doing it from all directions and they're really pushing towards this whole cashless system, which again is all AI. It's going to take us unifying and pushing back in the right way to heal this situation that we're in. And the way to do it is to disconnect from the matrix, folks. I've been saying for years, throw away your smartphone and throw away your credit card. A lot of people say, well, I wouldn't be able to look at your show if I didn't have a smartphone. Well, you, know, you can get a home computer. You don't need to carry this tracking device with you everywhere you go. Now, you could find your way around your own community without using a GPS to do it, but you could shop with cash and not with credit cards. You know, we could have done these things and we still can do these things. There are ways through this, you know, and if we are going to use the tech, then, you know, we have to start dealing with the powers that believe they be as individual people. The truth is that no one actually knows the truth because no one's free enough to know the truth. You know, a lot of people have opinions and you have belief systems and you have people arguing their opinions and belief systems claiming it's the truth with other people who are fighting the same battle they are, but they have different opinions and different belief systems which they believe is the truth. And so there's a clash, you know, divide and conquer. And the reality is that nobody is free enough to know what the truth is. And the truth movement is a loaded term. 
really it's a bunch of people arguing over their belief systems and what they should be focusing on is establishing the freedom they need to discover what the truth actually is. That's the way to do it, folks, through unity. And never before in history have we needed unity more than what we do now. I think that is an important thing to reflect on. We can still save the world, folks. We can still reverse the sequence. We can still find a way out of this mess. But it's going to take global participation of people because that's what freedom is, folks. It's an individual choice. It's personal responsibility. No one's going to save you. No one has any plan that you can buy into that is going to save you. We have to save ourselves, but we have to be prepared to do so. And before we can do that, we must first, of course, fully realize who and what we actually are. You know, there is no one way out of this problem. Ultimately, there are 7 billion ways out of the problem because there are 7 billion people on the planet and each one of them must find their own way through because ultimately the path that each of them must discover is the path to themselves, the path to their own heart. You know, that's what freedom is, folks. It's self-responsibility, 100% self-responsibility, 100% liability for your actions. You know, I've often said, folks, that nothing is impossible. The only thing that is impossible is that which you believe to be impossible. We can literally create anything we want. There's far too much disempowerment in the movement. There's far too much division in the movement. There's far too many people trying to sell their own ideas. And there's far too little unity. We're facing some very, very difficult situations in the planet. We're facing a very, very uncertain future at the moment. And the only way we can fix it is by participating. Participating in the world around us. Participating in ourselves. You see, that's the thing, folks. Most people don't participate in themselves because they don't know what they are. They think they are something else. They think they are whatever they perceive themselves to be in the virtual world that they live in. They think that they are what their life brings them or they are what they own or they are what they look like. And they don't ever discover their true self, the true beauty of themselves, the power that they have, the fact that they are created with equal standing, the same as everybody else. I believe that consciousness and the planet and reality itself are all in a state of transition. And I think that a lot of the outcome of what this transition will be depends on the way we participate and the effort we are prepared to put into bringing a positive change. Reality and consciousness and this beautiful planet all have faith in us that we can do it, that we can discover ourselves, we can discover our true power. It all depends on us. It all depends on what we decide to do at the time that's given to us. And I really believe that the way through, folks, is to lead yourself, to lead by example in what you do to always act in integrity and to lead by example in your community. But you've got to respect your community. That's the thing. You've got to respect the people around you. And this will ultimately come through you respecting yourself.